YouTube. So I want to show you guys how to um, kind of diagnose an X13 motor that's commonly found in these HVAC air handlers. This is a ream, but really they're they're in a whole bunch of different air handlers. This one the other day was making a beeping noise. It's kind of like a small light chirp, and now and it sort of wiggled back and forth, but it didn't rotate at all. It kind of just maybe less than a centimeter. It kind of just wiggled. It kind of works now. Um, I'm not sure why. Maybe just a change in temperature or atmosphere, but we're going to go ahead and replace it. And I'm going to show you guys how to test to see what exactly the com what exact components wrong. These X13 motors have kind of two portions to them. They have the electric motor part with the wind the copper windings, and then it has a little computer module on top. But that's exact that's what mine was doing. And I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to test to determine which portion is wrong. Usually. I would say probably 90% of the time it's the module, the little computer board in it. It's really sensitive to fluctuations in the electricity and it doesn't handle that well. So we're going to go ahead and diagnose this. I already know what's wrong with this one. We're going to go um, just because uh, it's been acting up. It sometimes does things, sometimes not. And I've already tested it, but I'm going to show you guys what to do. Now, what you want to do first is you want to go ahead, come to your breaker panel and shut off your power to your air handler like that. I don't have very many breakers because it's my shop. But go ahead and shut, kill, pick, kill the power to your air handler. Make sure everything's off. You have another breaker up there, so make sure both, both of them are off. And you're going to let it sit for five minutes. And the reason for that is inside the little module up there, there's capacitors. And those capacitors have to have time to drain down um, before you get a hold of them or else you'll, you'll get shocked pr pretty good. Um, potentially could kill you, but yeah, you want to let those capacitors de decharge, I guess, uh, for about five minutes before you go uh, digging into there. But I'm going to let mine do that, and I'll get back with you guys after five minutes. Unit five minutes to discharge any electricity it has held in its capacitors. Uh, come in here. You want to remove your side panel like I have that would normally go right here and locate your squirrel cage fan, which is right here. This is where your electric motor is going to be with your uh, module on top. So the first thing you want to do, after you've made sure all electricity is off, going to the unit, you want to check to see if your motor rotates. That's pretty easy. You just go in here and you'll feel your squirrel cage and see if your squirrel cage rotates, your little fan. And if it does, that's step one for your uh, the winding part, the actual electric motor portion of your um, motor is functional. So we know that it's not seized. So the next part you want to do is you want to take a picture of all these wire connections right here so you, uh, when you go to remove them, you know which wire goes which. But the next step you want to do is you're going to take this module off right here. It's held on by two quarter inch bolts. And they're quite lengthy, so you want to take those off here. Once you get to a certain point, you can usually do it by hand. You have two of these, one right here and then one kind of catty corner to it. And they're pretty lengthy bolts. They're just short enough that they'll fit in the um, cabinet here to take off. So your next one's, like I said, catty corner to it. Just like that. Okay, so yeah, only have two of those. Next step is to actually remove the module itself. Now, under here, in the module portion, there's going to be a cable with three wire connections in it. We're going to pop this up, and then you'll see under here, hopefully you guys can see that, you'll see this cable right here. You're going to unplug that and sort of set your module off to the side a little bit like that. So the next portion we're going to do is you're going to need your multimeter for this. You want to set it to your the lowest resistance you have that still reads 20 ohms. So in my case, I have 200 ohms. That's going to be good enough for us to see what the resistance is. This is this is what's called a phase-to-phase -phase test. And our goal is 20 ohms or less. And you're going to get your leads, and you're going to actually let's see, yeah, you're going to stick 
one lead on the one, one of the ends, doesn't matter which. So like that, in that case, you see I have it on the far right end. Hopefully you guys can see. Far right end, and then you can stick the other one in either of the two. You're going to test both. And you can see mine's 20.6. Now, uh, like I said, it's it's supposed to be 20 ohms, but this is within 10%, which it requests. It needs to be within 10%. So we are still good in that case. So um, 20.6 is just barely good, and that that's good enough for what we're doing. It should show something crazy different if it's broken. And so what we're going to do next is since we have three plugs, we're going to slide the, um, the lead back over to the middle one now. And you see we get the same ohm resistance. So you want to test all three there, and you do that by just testing two essentially. You want to make sure they're below 20 ohms or extremely close to 20 ohms, such as in this case. And you want to make sure that they're all within 10% of each other. So that signifies that this, the electric motor portion of this is good. So we know that the actual expensive part is still okay in this unit. So we're going to go ahead and pull what, we have, pull what we have set up here. And this is where it's important to take a picture. So you want to take a picture of all these little wires. These are essentially your ground, your power, and your in essence a relay but that tells you what torque this tells these top ones tell you what torque the motor needs to apply but we're going to unplug all these actually i'm going to get the new module i have first so i can just slide them right into the new module so here's my new module as you can see it's practically identical um, there's the part that comes in, I believe, three different horsepowers. This is the smallest one-third horsepower. And you can get these remanufactured on eBay for pretty cheap. I think a module like this is 130 bucks, And these are really, really common to break. It's not a rare, it's not rare at all. Okay, so back to what we were doing. We're just gonna cross-reference these back over here and make it easy so we don't have to look at our picture. So that one goes there. That one goes there. This one goes in neutral. All the, the slots are ground, um, labeled as well. So that makes it easy. Uh, come on. So we, that one's the middle one. So we, that's a, a leg of the power, so that goes to L. And then brown's usually a common, which will go to there. And last but not least, green's usually ground, so we pull off the ground like that, and out comes our module. As you can see, they're um, potted with epoxy rubber stuff, so can't service it. I don't know if you guys watched my generator videos, but the generator inverter had the exact same issue where it's potted and you can't service it. So we'll put this last one in. Green's usually ground, which it, it is. It grounds right to the squirrel cage fan in this case. And let's see here. Plug that in. So we got all our colors plugged in. Now, this might not be the same for you, your, your unit. Just follow what the how the previous motor was installed and you should be good. Now putting the unit back, we have to plug in this wire that we tested earlier. So go ahead and plug it. It's seated right, it has three holes that you gotta line it up with and slide it in like that. And then last but not least, you wanna make sure you align this correctly because it, it's got like slots it slides into, little grooves, just like that. Okay, so that's all aligned in. I'm going to get my these long bolts to put back in. Alright, so here's our first longer bolt. This new one actually looks a little cleaner 
less abused than the other one we're taking out. But so we're gonna thread these bolts back in. I'll get them a little bit with the my fingers while I can. Now these X13 motors are like I said earlier, 90% of the time it's this module that's broken on it. Very common issue. And pretty much anything, most things in the HVAC industry are quarter inch. And because they're potted like that, you pretty much can't refurbish them. I've tried on another module to try to take that potting out, and it's just, it, it's impossible, essentially. No easy way of doing it. All right, you guys, so that pretty much concludes setting this unit up, or replacing the module. I'll take you guys out of stand here. So just one last quick check. All our wires are securely in, back where they belong. Uh, we did clip in that three and we got the two screws on top. So here's the old module. Uh, this one is a lot rougher shape than that one was, but as you can see, it's potted. And I believe that's what's wrong with this unit. So let's go over to our breaker box. Well, actually, this one has a breaker right here. We're going to flick that on first. Now, the incoming power is off as well, so it's not too dangerous at the moment. But we're going to kick it on. It's okay to run it without this panel for a few moments, as long as you're using the fan setting. So we're going to go over here, flick our breaker back on, and we'll set this unit to fan. Let's see if she kicks over here. Well, there you go, you guys can see running full speed in there. Carefully do this here. There you guys go. That's how you re replace an X13 module and briefly test it. These are go bad quite often. I've had two go bad in two different units. And this one is, this is a refurbished one and it's less than two weeks old and it blew. So we'll see. The eBay seller I got it from was gracious enough to send another one to me, no charge. So, all right, you guys, thanks for watching. Comment, write, subscribe, and let me know if this video is helpful.